shadow in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch us again, oh God. Touch us right now.
group of children dancing today. Yeah, come on, come on. They, they need to get it. They need to get it in on. Uh, well, come on here, somebody. See, this is a lot of stuff I learned. A lot of stuff I learned. I learned in the church. Y'all get out of here. Some of us are where we are today because of God and the church. Come on, somebody. Amen.
turning up your mouths and turning your lips all up when somebody do something to you. It's almost to be expected. It's going to happen. If you live long enough and you have enough friends and associates, you know, it, it, it just won't, you know what, I look now, there's just sometimes, you know, uh, everybody don't agree with everybody. You know, you, you, you know your, your personality, your, my personality, just ain't that pretty sometimes too. It's just the nature of the beast. You know, we, we're, we're not only supernatural, but, but some of us got some naturalness in us still. Some of them, can I say it like that, Sister Bridget? And just, can I, some of them, we, we still got some naturalness in us. I used to have a natural. Let me put it to you like that. Woo, but can I tell you, you know what I like about God? God can change your nature. Now don't be coming up to me all and say you all you natural all the time, and you say you can't don't be natural all the time. Somehow or another, get in the spirit. Some for they that walk in the spirit, what do they do? They that walk in the spirit shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Don't be fleshly all the time. Oh, baby, you know that just my flesh. Keep that mess under subjection. Oh my Lord. Submit, submit myself unto God. Resist. What do I have to do? No, no, the first one. Woo, tell the neighbor, tell him to submit. Tell him it's hard sometimes. Because you got to bring yourself down.
better not, better not try to go in with you. Yeah. Can y'all see my face? Yeah, face. We got that camera. Y'all see my face? What does this face say? I wish you would. Really? 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 Talk to him. But God. Somebody say, but God. I'm talking about communion, though. Know. But God can change your nature. Anybody here, God can change their nature.
he gonna make a laugh and come right back around. Come on, somebody. All right, all right. Ooh, he was doing good in time, weren't we? Okay. For I received of the Lord. I'm at 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. This too in remembrance of me. When we take this communion, we're remembering Jesus. Yeah, we're doing this in remembrance. This is the Lord's Supper. Ooh, this is the Lord. This is not our supper. We're just active participants. But this is the Lord. It's his supper. But he's building, bidding us to come in and dine with him. After the same manner also he took the cup. Tell somebody he took the cup. When he stopped saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as all as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So we got a double remembrance. He's doing this because he's, very, he's making a very profound statement. He's, he's making a point so that we are to take note and to remember it. Says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Ooh, everybody can read this. 28th verse. Read it. Wait, 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 wait. But let a man or woman let them examine themselves. In other words, don't be looking at me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Because see, everything that we think it is, it's not. That's right. And anyway, it's tough throwing stones living in a glass house. Some of the same stuff they doing you was doing a couple weeks ago. You just happen to get your deliverance. Touch a neighbor and tell them total deliverance. Ooh, it's possible, baby. So let's read that again. Start at 28, please. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So if they eat and drink unworthily, they drink damnation to their own soul. But who am I to say whether or not they have received forgiveness or not? Can I get three witnesses here? Amen. You know, if we don't, if we're not mind, mindful of, if we're not mindful of communion, it's, it's like giving uh, somebody who drinks wine and overindulges in wine. It's like we used to call them winers. But we got to be so politically correct, right? So it's a person that really indulges in wine a lot and drinks wine a lot. It's like giving them wine and giving them the expensive stuff and they act like it's just like, you know, regular wine. That's what we do when we don't recognize the sacredness and the importance of communion. We just take the bread and eat it and take the cup. That's what we're doing. We act like, you know, we don't. It's nothing, but it, it is something very, very sacred in partaking in communion. It's a, it's a sacred and it's a powerful act. And we're supposed to do it knowingly, knowing what we're doing and doing it reverently. <clears throat> so how can we know about communion? How can, we, how can we know about how sacred it is and how reverent it is? What, what does it mean? It's, communion really is the New Testament. Passover, that's what communion is. Uh, the Last Supper, after all, it, it, it was the Passover meal instituted by Jesus Christ and ministered to the disciples. It, it celebrates, remember what it celebrates? It celebrates the deliverance 
of the children of Israel from the land of Egypt and Pharaoh. And the, remember the last play? Remember what the last play was? That Pharaoh pronounced upon himself? Uh, kill every firstborn. Well, what happened was, tell somebody God can turn it around for you. And, and tell them while they may speak evil of you, God can make them eat their last words. Woo, come on here, somebody. Exodus 12 and 13 says, The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And God said, When I see the blood, I will pass over you and the death angel and the plague will touch when I strike Egypt. Baby, when God strikes, can't nobody stop him. So, during communion, Jesus himself becomes our Passover lamb. Oh, man. Why do we need the Passover lamb? We, we need the Passover lamb because in the book of Romans 3 and 23 it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I'm glad that God didn't stop right there. But, it says, but God committed his love towards us. God illustrated, God showed, God produced his love for us. And that while we were yet sinners, he sent the Passover lamb and the lamb died. But tell your neighbor, the lamb didn't stay dead. Uh -huh. He rose again. John saw Jesus coming. John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ, his cousin, coming toward him and said, Behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. This is the one uh, that I said that's coming after me, but, but he was before me. Uh-huh. He said, I was here, but really, he was, I was here baptizing uh, in the river Jordan uh, to try to have water wash away your sins, but, but Jesus was already before me, slain Lamb of God before the foundation of the world. I know y'all didn't catch that, or else you would be getting excited. I said, John was trying to baptize in the water, trying to wash away their sins, but he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world because he was slain before the foundation of the world. Before any of this ever appeared, here he is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world because what can wash away my sins? Not my Down every now, you know, a couple of, well, maybe one good old beat down. 
She go, folks don't fight like that no more. <laughs> See, we grew up fighting in the neighborhood. We just fought. I mean, it was fist of cuffs. Brother Martin, you were digging, uh, brother, you know what I'm talking about. Man, look, and look, and it wasn't all this 10 on 1 either. You know, it's one to one. But now look, I had five brothers, share share. You beat him, you gotta beat my next brother. And it ain't gonna be two on one, it's still gonna be one on one. And if you beat him, you gotta beat him. Then if we can, if you know, then if I can't beat him, none of us, then all of us gonna jump in. Oh, get out of here, I'm just telling you like this. But now they shooting and all kind of crazy stuff. My point is, Jesus was wounded. Man, they, they took a crown of thorns and pressed them down. And the people that pressed the crown of thorns on his tender brow, their fingers got stuck. They stabbed him in the side, hung him up on the old rugged cross, hung him up on a tree. And you know what? He never said a mumbling word. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. So don't get uptight when we have problems and situations. It's going to happen. Jesus, had, Jesus and his boys had them. He had to tell Peter, Peter, don't kill him. Don't kill him, Peter. Peter missed Peter missed his neck. He was going for his neck. Yeah, he was, going, he was trying to chop his head off. Messing with me and mine. But they that live by the sword shall die by the sword. So, so say, so we're gonna be wounded, but but stay in the fight. I'm telling y'all, it's a miracle that I'm still here. Y'all don't believe it because you ain't been through it. And I, and I understand. See, because, you know, this joy that I have, taking this lady, I got some joy because what I've been through. Mm, you can't steal that, baby. You might be able to take some other stuff. Maybe I'll steal my car, steal my clothes. But, baby, you can't steal this joy. And, and, and I found out there's a reality in serving God. And if he don't do nothing else for me, he's already turned it off. Can I get about 14 witnesses up in here that God done something for you that no other person, no other being, no other man can do. But don't give up just because you're getting wounded. Don't just because you get your feelings hurt. Don't just because it don't Thinking right now. 
but God can. And uh, sometimes our minds are all messed up. They're all jumbled up. They're all confused. But you don't have to stay like that. You don't have to be like that. God can heal us emotionally. Because of Jesus' broken body, we can have peace. That's emotional healing. Now, because of Jesus' broken body, our wounds can be made whole. Guess what kind of healing that is? Physical healing. Spiritual. Emotional. And physical. We are a tripart being. And God wants us whole. H-W-H-O-L-E. And that means complete. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. For our entire being. He not only wants us to have emotional and physical. But God wants us to be healed spiritually. Amen. Stop Amen. living in the past. Stop letting our past control our future, which has a direct impact on the present. <clears throat> Touch yourself and tell yourself the past is preaching to me now. I got to say that because I'm preaching to my own self. Jesus offers the cup. He took the cup. Y'all please stand or else I'm going to be in there. Jesus takes a cup and says, it's a blood. In the Old Testament, the blood of animals was offered as sacrifice to seek forgiveness. Jesus said his blood was a ransom for many. Thus, the cup reminds us that Jesus forgives us of our sins. Jesus knows exactly what we are going through. As we celebrate this holy communion of God, let's remember what God has done for us. He did for us what no other man can do. And he did it by the direction of his Father. The holy communion of God. It's God's communion. And we're just participants. And God wants us to celebrate during this time. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you don't know who Jesus is, this is really your time. This is the climax of the service. That if you're here and you don't know who Jesus is, this is your time. Amen. For you to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here, we're going to ask you to come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, Christ.